Good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to you all to St Albans Cathedral on this fourth Sunday of our Advent journey. A special welcome if this is your first time here at the Abbey. You are very welcome among us as we gather for the service of choral matins. In the week ahead, I encourage you to keep your eye on the website, to take your newsletter home with you today, and uh, to see all the service times that are coming up during the week. If you've got family coming to join you, we have something for all ages and all people to gather in the week ahead as we tell the story of Christ's love for the world. Do keep your eye on the news sheet as well for details of services coming up after Christmas and into the new year. My sincere thanks to all the members of the cathedral community who have offered so much in volunteer time over these last weeks as we've welcomed thousands upon thousands of people to the cathedral. The tally for yesterday for carols on the hour is that we had over five and a half thousand people through singing Christmas carols yesterday and our thanks to all the choirs, including our own parish singers and the Cathedral Choir and Abbey singers who supported that. As we gather this morning for matins, in your notice sheet, the details for the service begin on page seven. The White Coral Matins card will guide you through the liturgy, details of music sung by the choir and by us as a congregation and the readings start on page seven. This afternoon at 2.30, we have our Lights of Love service. Do, if you know somebody who this Christmas will be missing someone they love, it, encourage them to come along as you too are very welcome. Welcome to you all as we gather in worship.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 7, beginning to read at the 10th verse. Again the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol, or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals, that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son, and you shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in, in dread, will be deserted. There ends the first lesson.
the first chapter of the Gospel according to St Matthew, beginning to read at the 18th verse. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. There ends the second lesson.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So this week, our Advent focus zooms into the moment of the Incarnation. God comes in the weakness of a child. Behind me in the screen, tucked away in either corner, you can't see them unless you go right up, stand the angel Gabriel and Mary facing each other from a distance, the moment of the Annunciation. And you will find images of Mary and Jesus elsewhere in this building. But I challenge you to find Joseph. Nothing, I think, in stone and the barest glimpse in glass. Both Matthew and Luke have given us a story of Jesus' birth. Luke focuses on Mary. She receives the angel's message and says yes. She exchanges news with Elizabeth, two expectant mothers sharing their joy. And we have the song of Mary, the Magnificat. However, with Matthew, today's gospel, the focus is on Joseph. It is to Joseph that the angel appears in a dream and Joseph who names the child. We know very little about this father figure in the life of Jesus. After this initial appearance, he's largely left behind and absent, perhaps something even killed off. However, and please excuse the amateur psychology here, we know that Jesus has a very secure, intimate sense of God as Abba, Dad. So just maybe he has learnt this from his adopted father, his Abba. Maybe Joseph is more formative than might appear. Let's start with that puzzling statement from Matthew. Mary's husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, plans to dismiss her quietly. Husband, because betrothal was much more than being engaged today. A betrothal ceremony will have taken place at about the age of 12 for a female. In this, the groom would give to the bride a civil contract and a payment, a so-called bride price. Several years could have passed before the marriage. Then it was that the bride moved in and sexual relations followed. What is puzzling here is that Joseph, described as righteous, resolves to divorce the bride, in effect to abandon her in her need. How is this righteous? For a Jew, to be righteous is to live by the Torah. And this states that if a man marries and finds his wife has had sexual relations, she could be stoned to death. How much this really happened, we don't know. But a righteous husband could not turn a blind eye, and neither would the village gossips. Nevertheless, within the parameters of the law, and in the great perplexity of both Mary and Joseph, Joseph does what he can. He resolves on the other permitted option, to dismiss Mary quietly with a certificate, releasing them both from that first certificate of betrothal. So perhaps we see in Joseph a righteousness which does not condemn which does not cast the first or any stone, which is tempered with mercy and loving kindness. Perhaps he shows us something of God. As the psalm goes, truth meets with mercy, righteousness with peace. But God has different plans, which he now reveals to Joseph. Mary is with child by the Holy Spirit, and he is to take her as his wife and to name the child Jesus. 
Jesus in Hebrew is Yehoshua, Joshua, God saves. Hence the explanation, he will save his people from their sins. Now, as an unmarried mother in that society, Mary stood to be condemned for her so-called sins. So Joseph is to save her and her child from this perceived disgrace. Joseph shows a righteousness which meets with mercy and which saves from sin. In his letter to the Romans, Paul argues that by the standards of the law, we all stand condemned, as Mary was set to be. But, he goes on, we are saved by a righteousness through faith. Joseph's faith, his faithfulness, that willing to trust, saves, and it paves the way for Jesus, who by his faithfulness will save his people from their sins. In our first reading, 700 years earlier, we meet King Ahaz of the house of David. He refuses to trust. He refuses the sign of a woman with a child called Emmanuel. Now, from the same line of David, Joseph does trust. The young woman bears Emmanuel, God with us. Joseph's faith paves the way for our salvation. And there's one more very important aspect to Joseph's action in today's gospel. He names Jesus. Why? He is naming Jesus as his child. To do this was the legal act of adoption. He gives to the child a status, a security, an identity. And perhaps here too, Joseph shows us something of God. As Jesus says, you did not choose me, I chose you. Joseph is taking the child and saying, my son, my beloved. The words of the Heavenly Father to Jesus in the Jordan at his baptism. And this is what God does to us in baptism. Adopts us, calls us God's own. It defines who we are and frees us to be who God made us to be. In Joseph, we see the righteousness of God, the saving act of God, the parental love of God. And like his ancestor Ahaz, he shows faith, no doubt through great perplexity. He makes room for God's action in the woman and names her child Jesus, Saviour. There might not be many images of Joseph in this cathedral, but he is now here under the nave altar with Mary awaiting the child. There you will see Mary's arms resting on her lap, ready for her newborn next Sunday at midnight. But look carefully, and Joseph's hands are similarly prepared. So I hope he will get his turn to hold the baby Jesus. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for your son born into a human family and society with all its frailties and vulnerabilities, but also with all its potential to show loving care. Bless our homes, our communities, our churches, that we may be places where the love of Christ is nurtured and manifest. Lord, in your mercy. And we pray for all expectant parents, 
particularly those struggling in poverty, insecurity or distress. May they find the help and strength they need. Bless them and those entrusted into their care that they may know the joy found in the gift of your Son. Lord, in your mercy. And we pray for our world, especially those places where there is conflict and where people are driven from their homes or where they stand condemned unjustly and harshly. In these places too, may truth meet with mercy and righteousness with peace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from before your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. 
And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Thank you.